Wow. We are on the second to last day of the 12 days of MLB rankings, day number 11. And this one, it's kind of new. In years past, I've done the best pitcher from every single team. This year, we're changing it up, just doing the straight up top 30. Technically top 31. Pitchers in Major League Baseball. Doesn't matter if there's multiple guys from one team, just the straight up best starting pitchers in my opinion. Want to give a quick shout out to my boy James, at Jeter Had No Range, who helped me out with these rankings. It's always good to have someone to talk to about them. He's a pitching whisperer. Here's his Twitter if you want to follow. These rankings, they're tough. There's like 50 legit good starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. A lot of good guys got left off the list. I'm going to do some quick honorable mentions as well as some like stat things to clarify for you guys so that there's better understanding. Trevor Bauer, not ranked. Don't know what's going on there next year. Tyler Glasnow, not ranked. Injuries, not really sure if he's even going to pitch next season, but of course those two guys would be ranked in the top 30 if they were playing a full season. And then I want to give honorable mentions to Shane McClanahan and Alec Manoa, two outstanding rookies who I think by the end of next year will be top 30, but right now I just couldn't put them in the list. And also for Justin Verlander, he's a top 30 pitcher when healthy, but next year coming off Tommy John surgery, it's hard to really project him to pitch more than like 110, 120 in. So he's not on the list either. You're also going to hear me say FIP a lot. It stands for fielder independent pitching. It's essentially telling you how good a pitcher was based solely on his production alone. Nothing with the fielders, nothing with defense behind you. So I just wanted to clarify that one stat in case you weren't sure. Also, you've probably noticed that in all the ranking videos, there's a last year's ranking spot on the video. Not going to be included on this pitcher because it's technically a new ranking for me. That being said, if you guys do enjoy this video, you like that I'm just ranking the best pitchers as opposed to every single team. Drop a like. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out, guys. Tomorrow is the top 50 player rankings. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you're subscribed. Get in the comment section down below. Give me your thoughts and opinions on my rankings for starting pitchers. And drop me a follow on all my social media, at Mark. Links in the description. Here we go. Top 30 or 31 pitchers in Major League Baseball. Coming in at the number 31 spot, I've got newly acquired Chicago Cub, Marcus Stroman. Stroman is one of those guys that is Mr. Consistent. When you watch him pitch, he doesn't make your jaw drop. He doesn't wow you, but the performance on the field is extremely consistent, and it will continue to be consistent because of the way this guy pitches. Last year in 33 starts, 179 innings, a 3.02 ERA, a whip at 1.145, and a FIP at 3.49. Stroman's strikeout rate was up for his career. His walks were down. He was giving up less hard contact. He was a really consistent pitcher for the Mets. He's going to go out there every five days for the Cubs, give you six innings, and give you a chance to win. He doesn't have that ace type stuff, but Marcus Stroman is definitely right in this top 30 range. Now getting the top 30 started at the number 30 spot, I've got Trevor Rogers, the Miami Marlins. Trevor Rogers, what a rookie season he had. He had had to be the best rookie pitcher in Major League Baseball last year. Finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting in the National League. 133 innings pitched, 2.64 ERA, a whip at 1.15, a FIP at 2.55, which is disgusting. He struck out 28.5% of the batters he faced, walking 8.4. All the expected numbers loved him too. Like, Trevor Rogers is legit. He's got really good stuff, and the only reason he didn't get more innings was because he missed a lot of time due to some personal reasons, but that 20% K to walk rate as a rookie in the National League East playing a lot of some of the, basic some of the best left-handed hitters in the league. I mean, Trevor Rodgers. I couldn't have been more impressed with a rookie last year on the pitching side. He was awesome. Speaking of left-handed starters in the National League East, let's talk about another one here coming in at number 29, Max Fried of the Atlanta Braves. Fried's a really solid pitcher, kind of in that same realm of you're not going to watch him pitch and be wowed, but he gets results and he gets the job done consistently. Last year in 165 innings pitched, Max Fried had a 3.04 ERA, a whip at 1.087, and a FIP at 3.31. He had a K rate at 23.7%, walking 6.1% of batters for a 17.5 K to walk rate. Again, similar the expected numbers like him. He's a really solid pitcher, and you can't forget what he did down the stretch in the postseason for the Braves. The dude's immensely valuable. Very good pitcher. For the 28th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, reigning American League MVP, Shohei Otani. Yeah, it's crazy, because we're only going to be talking about this guy's pitching, but keep in mind, he also hits. That being said, not factored into this ranking. Pitching side alone, he was great last year, Otani. 23 starts, 130 innings, 3.18 ERA, and a 1.09 whip, with a FIP at 3.52. That gave him a K rate last year of 29.3% and a walk rate 8.3. He got the K rate back up to the levels that we saw in 2018 and the walk rate was a career low. That's a huge step for Shohei Otani's game moving forward. He throws like 100 miles an hour. He's an absolute beast. And when he's pitching like that, even in only 130, 140 innings, he's still a top 30 pitcher in my eyes. For the 27th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, Chicago White Sox young arm, Dylan Cease. Dylan Cease doesn't get as much of the credit I feel like in this rotation, but he ended up having a really good year last year for the White Sox, especially if you can look past the ERA. Now in 32 starts, 165 innings, he does does have that 3.9 ERA, but his FIP was 3.41, so he actually pitched better than his results indicated, and he had a 1.249 whip. Dylan C struck out 31.9% of the batters he faced last year, walking 9.6, but shockingly, that's a bump up in the K rate, and he actually got better with the walk, so he's improving. He's showing an improvement in his game, and all the estimators love Dylan Cease. He's got swing and miss stuff. He's a really solid pitcher, and quietly had a top 30 season last year among starting pitchers. Just missing on the top 25, coming in at number 26, I've got Frankie Montas of the Oakland 
Oakland A's. Now, a lot of you guys may know Montas from when he got suspended for PEDs, but since then, Montas has been really good. Last year in 32 starts, 187 innings pitched, a 3.37 ERA, a FIP exactly at the same, 3.37, and a whip at 1.82. He was sixth in the Cy Young voting in the American League. He had a K rate of 26.6% and a walk rate of 7.3. Those are all improvements from his career averages. He was a four-win pitcher, and he developed a splitter last year that looks like a real serious weapon. Frankie Montas out in Oakland doesn't maybe get the shine of some of these other pitchers, but he is a very good pitcher. And then getting the top 25 started at the number 25 spot, free agent Carlos Rodon. When Rodon was healthy last year, he was looking like one of the best pitchers in the league. But of course, Carlos Rodon did have some injuries, and he was coming back from basically back-to-back -back seasons where he only pitched 40 innings combined. So you knew that would catch up with him at some point, and it did towards the end of the year where the numbers dropped off a bit, but still, in 132 innings, 2.37 ERA, a FIP at 2.65, a whip under one at .957, disgusting for a starter, and that was still good enough to get him fifth in the Cy Young voting despite having the fewest innings. But Rodon was filthy. I mean, a 34.6 K rate, a 6.7 walk rate. He was a five-win pitcher last year. As long as he's healthy, this dude is probably closer to that top 20, top 15 range. Could even crack the top 10 if he stays with this kind of stuff. But we did see him peter out a little bit towards the end of the year, and injuries are always going to be a concern. Do it for another full season, look as strong as he did, and Rodon is flying up this list. For the 24th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, San Diego Padres, you Darvish. Now, you Darvish had an insane 2020. I don't think we're going to see that you really, but I think we can find an in-between point from 2020 and 2021, which if we're looking at it, would give you a pitcher with like a 3-5 ERA, a 3-3-8 FIP, who has a K rate right around 30% and walks about 6% of the batters he faces. That's really, really solid, but of course he did have the down year last year, giving up more runs, giving up more hard contact, but it's not like he was actually bad. He just wasn't as good as he was the year before. That being said, I do need to bring him back in a little bit to earth, put him at number 24. For the 23rd best pitcher in Major League Baseball, go north of the border, Jose Barrios. Barrios looked really good last year. It was a big improvement and a big step forward in his game. He's always had the potential, and it seems like in Toronto, he might get the chance to really unlock it. Last year, he made 32 starts, 192 innings pitched, 3.52 ERA, a FIP at 3.47, and a whip at 1.063. He finished ninth in the Cy Young voting, got the K rate up a bit, which was really nice because that's something that we've all been waiting for, but it hadn't really shown recently, a 26.1% K rate. He wasn't walking anybody, walk rate under 6%, and he's a horse. This dude is good for 180, 190 innings a season. Jose Barrios, another guy who can fly up this list next year with a strong season. We saw what Toronto did with Robbie Ray. I'm interested to see what they can do with Barrios. For the 22nd best pitcher in Major League Baseball, I've got Nathan Evaldi of the Boston Red Sox. Now, Nathan Evaldi might be one of the more underrated pitchers in the league, and maybe I'm even underrating him. But of course, I mean, still top 20, 22 range. It's pretty sick. Last year, Evaldi, 32 starts, 182 innings, 3.75 ERA, which doesn't sound great, but he had a FIP at 2.79. That means just on his skill alone, he deserved to be a lot better. Maybe got a little unlucky, didn't have great defense behind him. Here's what Evaldi does incredibly well, though. 25% K rate, 4.6% walk rate, one of the best walk rates in the league, which is one of the reasons why he gets these great fielder independent pitching stats. The dude just doesn't let guys on base unless you get hits off of him. So for Nathan Navaldi, who was a five and a half win pitcher last year, I think he could also get bumped up on this list. But right now I'm going to be a little conservative because we have seen him be a little inconsistent in the past. And this was truly the first season since 2015 where he's been healthy. So I got him at number 22. Just a slight bump up here from Evaldi at number 21, Joe Musgrove of the San Diego Padres. I do think Joe Musgrove is the best pitcher in this rotation. And he showed that last year after a strong 2020 in Pittsburgh. I feel like he kind of got everyone to understand like, oh yeah, this guy is good. Last year in 31 starts, 32 appearances, he threw 181 innings, 3.18 ERA, a whip at 1.08, and a FIP at 3.7. Musgrove got his K rate to 27.1%, maybe not matching what he did in 2020, but the walks were down to 7.2, which was nice. He's got really good stuff. You saw that no hitter early on in the year. Musgrove is extremely talented, and I think just on the precipice of being a top 20 pitcher, getting the top 20 started at the number 20 spot, Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants. Logan Webb looked great last year in his 24-year-old season. Dude, super young, and you've seen him improve on his game, it seems like, every single year, to a point where last year, he was pretty dominant. 27 appearances, 26 starts, 148 innings, 3.03 ERA, a whip at 1.106, and a FIP at 2.72. Those numbers are great. He actually pitched extremely well. His K rate was up to 26.5%, walk rate down to 6. He was dominating batters, and of course, he's got some devastating stuff. His balls, they be moving. So Logan Webb, I think he's a top 20 pitcher, especially going into his 25-year-old season. I think it's one of the reasons why the Giants were kind of okay with Gosman walking. Logan Webb's a stud. For the 19th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, Philadelphia Phillies, Aaron Nola. Nola, of course, used to be the ace of the staff and still has ace quality stuff. It's just like maybe last year he took a little bit of a step back. But even then, if you dive deeper into the numbers and don't just look at the ERA, Nola was still really good. So, of course, let's talk about that ERA. 32 starts, 180 innings. Nola had a 4.6 ERA, which sounds terrible, but his FIP was 
2.37, so his actual pitching was still very good, and he had a whip at 1.129. Nola struck out almost 30% of batters he faced last year, 29.8, while walking 5.2, which was a career low, and the numbers were somewhat reflecting what happened in 2020, where he was really good. Phillies don't have a great defense behind him, so that could be part of the reason why. I think I do have to bump Nola down a few pegs, but he's still, I mean, really good. Dude's a beast, and he's consistent. He's out there for 180, 200 innings a year. Next up at the number 18 spot, I got Freddie Peralta of the Milwaukee Brewers. Peralta, what a breakout season he had last year. 28 appearances, 27 starts, 144 innings, 2.81 ERA, a FIP at 3.12, and he had a whip under one at 0.97. And this is for a guy who does walk a fair share of batters. His walk rate was almost 10% last year, but he was just not giving up any hits whatsoever. Swing and miss stuff is disgusting. He had a 33.6% K rate. He's got a pretty devastating slider. I mean, Brewers make pitching out of thin air, and it seems like Freddie Peralta has the stuff to be a frontline starter. I mean, he's part of that three-headed monster. Got him at number 18. At the number 17 spot, I'm going to go with Chris Sale of the Boston Red Sox. It might be a little bit harsh, but I am a little concerned about Chris Sale coming back from the injury. Now, we did see him make nine starts last year, 42 and two-thirds innings. This is some okay success. He was kind of getting hit all over the place, but it was good to see that he did have some of his old swag and old stuff back. But again, since the end of 2019, this is a guy who's only thrown 42 innings. I'm being cautiously optimistic with him. I don't know how much he's really going to be able to pitch next year. In those nine starts, Chris Sale had a 3.16 ERA in 42 innings pitched, a FIP at 3.69, and a whip at 1.336. He was walking batters at a 6.6% rate. That wasn't really the issue. He was just kind of getting hit, and the K rate was down from what we've seen from him in the past at 28.4%. Again, coming back from a big injury like Chris Sale, you're never going to be as sharp immediately, which is why I have him down here at number 17. That being said, we've seen him be a top five pitcher in Major League Baseball in the past before. When he's healthy and all things are going, he's one of the nastiest dudes in the league. I'm just choosing to be a little cautious with him, because let's be honest, the last full season he pitched in 2019, he's a little all over the place. For the 16th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, Chicago White Sox, Lance Lynn. South side of Chicago's got some pitchers, and Lance Lynn is one of them. The way I would describe Lance Lynn is vanilla ice cream, oatmeal, mashed potatoes. They're all great. They're fantastic, but they're not exciting by any means. That's Lance Lynn for you. He's going to throw 70% fastballs, and then the other 30% is going to be sliders. But it works. He's good, and he's going to pitch about 150 to 180 innings a season. Lance Lynn last year, 28 starts, 2.69 ERA, a whip at 1.07 with a FIP at 3.32, finished third in the Cy Young voting in the American League, struck out 27.5% of the batters he faced, walking 7%. Those were both some of the best numbers of his career. Lance Lynn, he's just an absolute beast out there. He's an ox. He's a bulldog. Getting the top 15 started at the number 15 spot, reigning American League Cy Young Award winner, Robbie Ray. Now, I know what you're saying. He won the American League Cy Young. How is he at 15? Well, guys, we have to take everything with a grain of salt. While Robbie Ray was great last year, I'm not completely sold on him being like one of the top five pitchers in the league just yet. But last year, he definitely performed like it. Let's go through his numbers. 32 starts, 193 innings, which was the best in the American League, a 2.84 ERA with a whip at 1.045. Again, best in American League, but a FIP at 3.69. So you can see why there might be a little hesitation. That being said, Robbie Ray, of course, has that insane slider, which causes so many swings and misses, but the fastball command's a little bit iffy and throws the ball right down the middle and just gets lucky sometimes. That being said, still a 32% K rate last year. You can't ignore that with a just below 7% walk rate. He does some stuff at an elite level, and that's why I put him in the top 15. He's one of the best pitchers in the game. I'm just not ready to put him in that top 10 category just yet. One more season, one more. But uh, Seattle, it's a great place for him to go to because they develop pitching very well out there. Coming in at the number 14 spot, probably one of the most underrated pitchers in the league, Sandy Alcantara of the Miami Marlins. Sandy, oh my goodness, this guy's a beast. And before you commented, I don't care about the losses. 15 losses last year, doesn't matter. He's a way better pitcher than that. We know win-loss doesn't matter. 33 starts, 205 innings pitched. By the way, 2019, the last full season he played, 197, dude's a beast. He's another bulldog. 3.19 ERA, a FIP at 3.42, and a whip at 1.075. Alcantara had a career high in K rate at 24%, a career low in walk rate at 6%. All his numbers are pointing upwards, and that's still only in his 25-year-old season. He's going to be 26 next year, slated, slotted to pitch 200 innings with the K rate bumping up. His stuff is getting better. He throws 100 miles an hour with a pretty disgusting slider and a great changeup. Sandy Alcantara is incredibly underrated and definitely right on the precipice of being a top 10 pitcher. On the flip side of the coin, let's talk about the pitcher with the most wins in baseball last year. At number 13, I got Julio Urias of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, I don't care about wins losses, but to be fair, Julio Urias was really good, so he kind of deserved it. 185 innings last year, 2.96 ERA, a 3.13 FIP, and a whip at 1.018. Finished seventh in the Cy Young voting. I think he's part of the reason why the Dodgers were kind of okay with letting Max Scherzer go. They got a real beast in Julio Urias. He's not better yet, but he's really good for what you're paying him. He was a five-win pitcher last year, had a career high K rate at 26.2%, a career low walk rate at 5.1. He's got a great pitch arsenal. And the dude, I mean, he goes out there every five days and throws six, seven innings. Julio Arias is very valuable to this Dodgers team. Another pitcher that's, I think, probably
probably a little underrated. Borderline top 10, number 13. Coming in as the 12th best pitcher in Major League Baseball, newly acquired Toronto Blue Jay, Kevin Gaussman. Kevin Gaussman, man, he turned me around. Last year in 2020, I was like, okay, Kevin Gaussman has made me change his opinion on him so quickly. 2020, pitched well. And then 2021, he pitched really well. I mean, we're talking ace quality stuff. A fastball that sits in the mid to high 90s, a devastating splitter. It's a great two pitch mix. Probably needs to really develop a third pitch to get like to this top 10 range. But even still, the numbers he put up with only those two pitches really being plus, it's incredibly impressive. And the Blue Jays can develop pitching. We know that. So let's go over his year. It was great. Kevin Gaussman last year in 192 innings, 2.81 ERA, a FIP at 3.0, and a whip at 1.042. Finished sixth in the Cy Young voting, behind, of course, the beasts that are the National League pitchers. And it doesn't seem like he's going to slow down anytime soon. He had a 29.3% K rate, 6.5% walk rate. Kevin Gaussman was elite last year, elite the year before. He's a top 12 pitcher. And then just slightly getting ahead of all these guys, coming in at number 11, just outside the top 10. It's old man Charlie Morton. While Charlie Morton may not as well be one of the most sexy pitchers, the last two full seasons he's played, he put up a six win year in 2019 in terms of F4 and a 4.61 last year with Atlanta in 2021. Of course, he had that weird COVID season in 2020 in between there, but Charlie Morton is very, very good. Last year, Morton in 33 starts, 185 innings at a 3.34 ERA, a FIP at 3.18, could have even pitched better, a whip at 1.045, striking out 28% of the batters he faced, walking 7.7. He still got really, really good stuff. And of course, while I did break his leg in the World Series, there's going to be a little bit of a concern there next year. It seems like he's going to be fine. I know going into 38 years old is a little risky, but Charlie Morton, that dude's a pitcher. He's a beast. Just outside the top 10. Maybe a little aggressive, but I, I can go with it. I can swallow that pill. Getting the top 10 started at the number 10 spot, Clayton Kershaw, free agent, which feels weird to say. While Kershaw didn't pitch a full season last year, only 121 innings and 22 starts, it's crazy how good he still is, and he's only ever been very good. Last year, he had an ERA at 3.55, which doesn't sound great, but a FIP at 3.0, whip at 1.019, coming off of a really strong 10 start season in 2020 and a really good 2019. He's still, I think, a top 10 pitcher in baseball until he like proves otherwise. The biggest concern with him is his health, but he got the strikeouts up last year to a spot he hasn't been since 2017. 29.5 K rate, a 4.3% walk rate to give him K to walk rate of 25.2%. He's still disgusting. Clayton Kershaw, top 10 pitcher. I don't know how, but he's still really good. For the ninth best pitcher in Major League Baseball, again, south side of Chicago, Lucas Giolito of the White Sox. Giolito had a little bit of a rough start to the year, but you look at his stuff and you're like, oh, this guy's a beast. 31 starts, 178 innings pitched, 3.53 ERA, a whip at 1.103, finished 11th in the Cy Young voting. He had a K rate last year of 27.9%, a walk rate of 7.2, and that was, of course, with some struggles mixed in there. I just wish the White Sox would shift a little bit. It would help out Lucas Giolito a lot. He's got the stuff, doesn't necessarily get the best help from his defense all the time, but I really do believe that this guy is a top 10 pitcher and a Cy Young in the making. Maybe he didn't bounce forward as much as we were expecting last year, but I do think that 2022 is going to be a pretty awesome year for Giolito. I still think he's top 10. For the eighth best pitcher in Major League Baseball, keeping in the AL Central, Shane Bieber of the Cleveland Guardians. Yeah, Bieber, of course, we know what he did in 2020. Cy Young year, disgusting, pitching triple crown, and he was good in 2019. In 2021, while he did only make 16 starts and 96 innings, of course, due to some injury stuff, Shane Bieber was still great. A 3.17 ERA, a FIP at 3.03, and a 1.21 whip. It's coming off of a season where he was like historically great in 2020, albeit small sample. But if you combine those two seasons, you're looking at about 174 innings with a 2.48 ERA, a FIP at 2.6, and a whip at 1.057, a K rate of 36%, and a walk rate of 7.7. I mean, last year was down to 33, which by the way is still elite. Bieber is an absolute beast. I think in a full season, you're looking at a possible top five pitcher, no doubt. Next up at the number seven spot, I've got Walker Bueller of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Bueller was a Cy Young candidate last year. He is one of the best pitchers in the game. That's why he's ranked number seven here. This is an extremely high rank. It finished fourth in the Cy Young last year. 33 starts, 207 innings pitched. The dude goes like seven innings guaranteed every single time. It's shockingly good. 2.47 ERA, a FIP at 3.16, and a whip at 0.968. Now, unlike some of the guys towards the top of this list, he doesn't have the absolutely devastating elite K stuff, a 26% K rate, 6.4% walk rate, but you just see the success he has year after year and he's seemingly getting better. There's no reason that Walker Bueller can't be a top five pitcher, honestly, in these rankings. I just think some guys are slightly ahead of him, but it's ever so slight. I can't stress that enough. Walker Bueller is disgustingly good. Five and a half win pitcher last year. For the sixth best pitcher in Major League Baseball, going back out to Milwaukee, Brandon Woodruff. Talk about a beast on the mound. 6'4", 243. This guy's stature is intimidating and his pitching is also incredible. Last year in 30 starts, 179 innings, 2.56 ERA, a FIP at 2.5. 96 and a whip under one for the second consecutive season at 0.965. He finished fifth in the Cy Young voting. Woodruff had a 29.8% K rate, a 6.1% walk rate, which is pretty standard for what he's done since 2019, where he has been one of the better pitchers in baseball, 
extremely underappreciated up until this past year. Brandon Woodruff is like so good. This top 10 is loaded. It's crazy that he's not even a top five guy. He's right on the border for me. Getting the top five started at the number five spot, Zach Wheeler of the Philadelphia Phillies. And this one hurts. Anytime you see a former Met in these, makes me cringe, especially because kind of called it when he signed with the Phillies. I said it was going to be great. Remember when people said they overpaid for him? Ha, <laughs> idiots. You were completely underpaid for Zach Wheeler because last year he was the second best pitcher in the National League where he made 32 starts. He pitched a major league best 213 innings, which I can't stress how valuable that is. A 2.78 ERA, a 2.59 FIP with a whip at 1.008. Wheeler struck out a career best 29% of the batters he faced, a career low in walk rate at 5.4%. He was out there for seven innings every game. I mean, Wheeler was so, so good. All the expected numbers love him too. He was a seven win player last year from the pitcher spot, according to Fangraph's war. Zach Wheeler is without a doubt a top five pitcher in the game. Ugh, I can't believe the Mets didn't resign him. Thanks, Brody. That being said, coming in at number four, I've got a New York Mets newly acquired pitcher. I can't believe those words are coming out of my mouth. It's Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer's so good. He's one of the best pitchers of this generation. And he continued to be so good last year, finishing third in the Cy Young Award voting. 30 starts, 179 innings pitched, a 2.46 ERA, a FIP at 2.97, with a whip major league best at 0.864. I mean, outside of 2020, this guy hasn't had even a mediocre season, even a good season. He's been elite since 2015. So good. Scherzer was striking out 34% of the batters he faced last year, walking 5% of them to give him one of the best K to walk ratios in the league of 2.89. The expected stats love him as well. Max Scherzer's going to be in New York next year. I can't believe this. Even before the Mets got him, he was still a top five pitcher. I'd still put him at number four. He's disgusting. Garrett Cole of the New York Yankees coming in as the third best pitcher in Major League Baseball for me. Garrett Cole, like, arguably could have won the Cy Young last year. He finished second in the voting, despite getting the nickname of, like, Sticky Stuff Merchant, because of course what happened with that. Regardless, he was still disgusting. 30 starts, 181 innings pitched, 3.23 ERA, a FIP at 2.92, and a whip at 1.059. Cole struck out 33.5% of the batters he faced, walking 5.6% of the batters, which is just, I mean, that's unbelievable. It's basically like the second best year of his career outside of 2019, where he had that 39.9% K rate, which was insane. But all the stats love him. He goes deep into games. He's an absolute beast. He may be the second best pitcher in New York, but he is the third best pitcher in Major League Baseball. Because coming in at number two after a historical season, winning the Cy Young in the National League, Corbin Burns of the Milwaukee Brewers. While Burns did not maybe have the innings that Zach Wheeler had, he made the innings that he did pitch worth a whole lot. Last year in 167 innings, 28 starts, a 2.43 ERA with a FIP at 1.63. He had the best FIP in the entire league by a good margin. An ERA plus at 176, which again, was the best in the league by a good margin. And a whip at 0.94. Again, won the National League Cy Young. He was in a seven and a half win pitcher last year. 35.6% K rate, 5.2% walk rate, which was actually a huge improvement from the 2020 breakout that he had where he was walking 10% of the batters he faced. That was a huge difference. He wasn't giving up free base runners. He wasn't getting hit hard. He was striking everybody out. Corbin Burns, number two pitcher in the league. Because despite having a shortened season due to injury, I think the reigning best pitcher in baseball still, I think a lot of people agree with me, is Jacob deGrom of the New York Mets. Before the injury, Jacob deGrom was having possibly one of the best seasons that we've seen a pitcher have in Major League Baseball. In 92 innings, 15 starts, Jacob deGrom had a 1.08 ERA, a whip at .554. Yes, you're hearing that correctly. A whip at .554 with a FIP at 1.24. deGrom was striking out 45% of the batters he faced, walking 3% of them for a K to walk ratio of 41.7. No one comes even close. You're talking like Liam Hendricks, Josh Hader, who are relievers. That's what deGrom was doing as a starter. There was 103 miles an hour, a slider that is among the nastiest in all of baseball. He had a 1.08 ERA last year. I know he had a shortened season, but even then, he was a five-win pitcher in 92 innings. And it's not like this is out of nowhere. He won back-to-back -back Cy Youngs in 18 and 19, finished third in 2020, arguably could have won it. And despite only pitching 92 innings, he finished ninth in Cy Young in 2021. DeGrom, to me, and I think a lot of people around baseball, is still the clear-cut number one pitcher in the league. He's like actually playing a video game. So there they are, my top 30 pitchers in Major League Baseball. Of course, they, Jacob DeGrom's number one. He's undefeated. 45% K rate. I know it was only 92 innings, but the dude's just on another level. He is still the best pitcher in baseball. The top seven is basically its own class. There's a bunch of different tiers in this top 30, but I do think that these are the 30 best pitchers going into Major League Baseball next season. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the content coming at you. Follow me on all my social media at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description. Tomorrow is the big top 50 players in Major League Baseball's hitters, pitchers. They're all ranked to give us the top 50. Thank you guys so much for watching. You know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload. Click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.